Welcome to this video supplement involving absolute value equations when they are nested together. We are going to work through the problem you see on the screen. Perhaps you want to hit pause and try this problem out before we proceed together. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is identify our key numbers. And remember what a key number is. It's a spot that makes inside one of the inner absolute values equal to zero. So here, 2x minus 3. That would be 0 at x equals 3 halves. So 3 halves will be a key number. And 7 minus x, that's going to equal 0 when x is equal to 7. So 7 will be a key number. Next, we will put those key numbers on a number line and identify the cases that are formed as a result. Here's what we have. Now we are going to look at each of these three cases separately figuring out how we remove the absolute values on those innermost items. So let's begin with case one, when x is less than or equal to three halves. An easy number to think about in this region is just x equals zero. Now the outermost absolute value symbols must remain. We're not able to take those off quite yet. But if x is zero, this first absolute value is negative inside. So to remove the absolute value symbols, we have to make sure it becomes a positive. To do that, we put the negative sign out front. Inside 7 minus x, if x is 0, that's positive. So we just take off those absolute value signs, turn them into parentheses, and that's it. Now please notice when we did that, we had to keep this negative sign out front because it was there. It has nothing to do with what's going on inside the absolute value. Then we have the plus 2x is equal to 5. Now we're going to clean up and simplify inside those absolute values. So we would have to distribute our negative here. We would have negative 2x plus 3 minus 7 plus x, all inside the absolute values, plus 2x is equal to 5. Cleaning up inside the absolute values one more time, we've, we're going to have a negative x minus 4 inside those absolute values, plus 2x is equal to 5. Now we have to look for a potential additional key number. In this situation right here, x equals 4 is going to be, or excuse me, in this situation here, x equals negative 4 is going to be another key number. Now look at the case we're in. We're in the case where x is less than or equal to 3 halves. Negative 4 falls in that case. So what we have happen is pretty straightforward. We have a situation where we've got the negative 4. Over here is our 3 halves. And we're splitting this into two subcases. We'll have a subcase A and a subcase B. So let's just kind of write those over here on the side just so that we can see everything on the screen. We've got subcase A. That's going to be when x is less than or equal to negative 4. Now let's pick a value of x there, like negative 7. If we plug it in, this would be 7 minus 4, which is 3. Inside the absolute values would be positive, so we just remove those absolute value symbols when writing this subcase. So it'll be a negative x minus 4, just removing the absolute value symbols, plus 2x is equal to 5. Uh, let's see, that's going to be x minus 4 is equal to 5. That's going to be x is equal to 9. Now, to check these, it's pretty simple. You have to check it against both the subcase, and it also has to check against the original case. In this situation, it doesn't check with either. 9 is not less than or equal to negative 4, and it's not less than or equal to 3 halves. So that would not be a valid solution. Then we're going to look at subcase B. For subcase B, x is going to be bigger than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to 3 halves. x equals 0 would be an example. When we plug in x equals 0 right here, inside the absolute value is negative. So to remove the absolute values, we have to change the sign. We put parentheses and we throw a negative out front. Plus 2x equals 5. We'll distribute our negative, clean things up, 
and solve for x. Now in this case we're getting x equals one-third. Let's track it to see if it is a solution. So one-third, does it check? Is it in the subcase? Yeah, that's good. Also, x equals one-third. Is it in the original case itself? Yes, it is. So that will be a solution. So watch out if you have a nested set of absolute values and you need to go through and examine subcases. Let's turn our attention to the next case and see what happens. So case two, x is between three halves and seven. Let's pick x equals four. So if we plug in x equals four, this first absolute value is positive. We can just remove those absolute value signs. And this second absolute value is also positive. So we can just remove those absolute value signs, keeping the negative that was there out front though, because that's not part of what we're considering. Okay, cleaning up inside, 2x plus x is going to be a 3x. Negative 3 minus 7 is going to be minus 10. If you do that in one step, just be careful that you don't make any silly mistakes. So now at this juncture, we look and we see what the key number would be. In this case, the key number would be x equals 10 thirds. That is bigger than 3 halves. 3 halves is 1.5, 10 thirds is 3 and a third. It's going to fall in case 2. So we will have a situation again of having subcases. Here, we had 3 halves. Here, we have 4. We're going to have another set of a subcase A and a subcase B. So again, I'm going to write it out over here on the side so we can see how everything works. For subcase A, 3 halves would be less than or equal to x, which would be less than or equal to 10 thirds. Yes, we have to be able to do this without a calculator, so just be careful. If I plug in a value of x, say x equals 2, inside the absolute values here would be negative. So to take off the absolute value sign, I would have to put a negative symbol out front. And then we will clean everything up. Make sure to distribute that negative. You don't want to make a silly mistake. And I'm getting x equals 5. Unfortunately, x equals 5 does not fall in the subcase. Just make it clear why you're saying the answer is that it is not a solution. Then we will also have subcase B. For subcase B, 10 thirds will be less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. Now, if I plug in a value of x between 10 thirds and 4, let's say x equals, hmm, well, it's going to be like 3.5 or something. This will be positive inside. Notice it's changing around the 10 thirds. That was the key number. So we can just simply remove those absolute values and rewrite our equation. and we get that x is equal to 3. Unfortunately, again, 3 does not fall in the subcase. 10 thirds is 3 and a third. 3 is not greater than or equal to 3 and a third. So overall here, in our second case, we did not achieve an additional solution. Last but not least, we're looking at case 3, when x is greater than or equal to 7. So if I plugged in something like x equals 10, that first absolute value is positive inside, so we can just remove it. But over here, this would be negative. When this is negative, we're going to put another negative out front, or you can think about just changing this sign right here from a negative into a positive. Whatever works for you, whatever you find most rational in considering this. Plus 2x equals 5. Simplify inside our absolute values. 2x minus x is just an x. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Now we have to look for key numbers again inside this absolute value. Here the key number is x equals negative 4, but notice x equals negative 4 does not fall inside the case we're considering. We do not get subcases here. This absolute value is either always going to be positive inside or always going to be negative inside when we're in case 3. If I plug in a value of x bigger than 7, it's always positive. So we just remove the absolute value symbols and continue on our merry way. We'll get 3x is equal to 1 and x equals 1 third. 
ah, we saw that value before. But in this case, we would say that that isn't a solution because one third is not greater than or equal to seven. Don't worry though, it doesn't override what we achieved earlier in this problem when we said that x equals one third was a solution. So when we consider our original problem then, we have to go back and look at exactly how things panned out. In case one that we did first, in case one that we did first, we actually had a solution there. The solution was that x is equal to one third. Over in situation case two, we didn't have any solutions. In case three, we didn't have any solutions. So overall, our answer to this problem would be that x is equal to one third. Hopefully you understand the process in working with nested absolute values. You start with the innermost ones, find their key numbers, and then when you get to another absolute value of an algebraic expression, look for additional key numbers and see if those additional key numbers fall in the case you're working with. If they do, you will gather subcases like we had in the first two scenarios in this problem. If they don't, you just keep on going like we saw in the third case in this problem. Now sure these problems can get quite sophisticated. Be careful, be organized, try your best to avoid silly mistakes, but overall the organization and the ability to work with a number line are key traits both for these kind of problems and for your success in this class as well as your ability to succeed and thrive in AP Calculus.